Hey everybody, Arn Hawaii here. I'm going to show you how to set up OBS Studio really quickly. Now this setup's not going to work for everybody, every internet connection, every computer setup, but uh, I'm going to show you just sort of the bare bones settings to make sure that you can get streaming right away. And then you can fine tune stuff later. So here we go. Okay, so you've downloaded OBS Studio and opened it up and you see pretty much everything is empty, so you're ready to get started. The first thing I would recommend you do is create a new scene collection. Go ahead and call it anything you want. We'll call it uh, Streaming One. It's up to you. You notice probably I have a, a bunch of uh, profiles are already on here, but uh, otherwise now you will probably only see the Streaming One in here. This is really important because you can do all kinds of stuff with it. You can duplicate it uh, once you've built a bunch of stuff. You can uh, import and export scene collections. That's also pretty important. Once you've built a whole lot of stuff, you probably want to export a backup somewhere, just in case. All right. So now that we're done with that, let's dive right into the settings. You click the settings button over here on the right. Now, the first thing I would recommend you do is make sure that uh, show confirmation dialog when starting streams and when stopping streams are both enabled. So check those boxes. The reason for that is that you just don't want to accidentally start streaming or accidentally stop your stream. All right, so we're going to skip the stream area for now, and we'll come back to it. Let's go straight over to Output next. Click that. And now you'll probably see Output Mode is set to Simple, which is fine. Um, we can set the bit rate to 1500. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is I want to make sure that you have a stream that is almost certain to work in the beginning. And you can learn more about bitrate in other videos and maybe even increase it based on the performance of your internet and your computer itself. Now the encoder is set to software. I recommend that you set it to hardware. It's just going to run better. It'll use your actual graphics card instead of some kind of software encoding. Everything else here should be fine. If you decide that you want to record your streams, or just do recordings uh, without being live, you can set a recording path here so that you know where your recordings end up when you're done. And for recording format, you know, it depends on the operating system that you um, are using, whether it's Mac or Windows. I'm on Windows, so I like to export to MP4. Okay, so let's move on to audio. Now, everything up here should be fine. And this is where you're going to basically connect your different audio devices. If you want desktop audio, like for example, you're playing a video game and you want people to hear the sound in that game, then you want to go desktop audio and you want to find your actual desktop audio. Now default will probably work, or you could actually just go ahead and select it. This is my desktop audio, so I went ahead and put that there. Now the next thing would be mic auxiliary audio. This is where you're going to connect your actual microphone that you're going to use to speak to people in your stream or recording. Go ahead and click that, and then find the actual microphone that you're going to be using. Uh, mine is a Yeti Nano, so I'll put that there. Everything else should be fine. Let's move on to video next. Now in here, you're going to actually determine the physical size or resolution of the stream that's going out. So. My native resolution is 1920 by 1080. Uh, that's going to be high enough quality for all kinds of stuff. Now, if you want to stream at a lower resolution for whatever reason, uh, you can actually go into the output scaled resolution, click that, and then basically downscale. So this is 720 here. And that's going to make OBS downscale your resolution before going out live. But honestly, I recommend going ahead and using your native resolution first and see how it goes from there. Everything else in here should be fine, although I would recommend that you set to 30 frames per second for the uh, frames per second value, and then let's move on. Now in hotkeys, you can actually set up uh, shortcut hotkeys to all kinds of stuff in here. And you'll see even more stuff populated when you have more scenes and sources and things like that. So if you like hotkeys, that's where you want to go. And now let's move on to advanced. Now, process priority is basically where you say, uh, I want OBS to get 
X amount of attention from my CPU uh, versus other programs. Now, in a lot of cases, they'll recommend that you use above normal or even high. Uh, let's start with above normal. And if for some reason your CPU is just going absolutely crazy when you try to stream, maybe bring it down to normal or even go in the other direction and go to high and see what happens. A lot of this is trial and error, so just pay attention to your stream or your recording. And then you can even ask people who are watching uh, what it looks like, feels like, and that might guide you to what you need to change. Now, if you want to adjust the file name formatting for recordings that you create, you can do that here. If you want to add a stream delay for whatever reason, let's say you don't want people to interact with you in real time, you can enable that. And then you can set the duration for how long the stream is going to be delayed in addition to the native latency that will occur. And you can uh, set up automatic reconnection in case for whatever reason you go offline, OBS can attempt to reconnect you on its own. And you can decide how long it waits to try again between attempts and the maximum number of retries. Everything else in here should be fine. All right, so I promised we would go back to stream settings. So let's go ahead and get there. So now this is where you're going to actually connect the streaming service or platform that you're going to stream to, whether that's Twitch, Mixer, uh, Restreamio, in case you use that to stream to multiple platforms, or a specific RTMP. So you'll see these different options in here. And if there are more you're looking for, you can click Show All and there's probably more options there. I'm gonna go ahead and select Twitch. And then you can do one of two things here with Twitch. You can connect the count, uh, which will authorize uh, OBS to uh, find your stream key and access your chat and do all kinds of stuff. And then you'll actually have docs that you can add so that all of those things are in one place. So you can see your chat inside OBS and things like that, your stats, or you can just use stream key and I'll go ahead and click that to change a couple options without connecting your Twitch account directly to OBS. I do believe I have a video in my uh, how to streaming playlist that explains what these uh, connected um, features are that they just added to OBS. So look for that video. Uh, I'll also drop a link for it in the description. Okay, back to stream key. You can actually select which server you want to broadcast through. Uh, most of the time, if you select the server nearest to the city you live in, it'll be pretty fast. There are ways to actually detect the real ping and uh, bitrate capacity of available servers for Twitch. And uh, that's kind of another video. So we won't really worry about that. I'm just going to leave it on auto. All right, now, how do you get your stream key? Well, you'll go to Twitch for that and then you'll copy and paste it in here, and then you'll be good to go. When you hit stream, you're going to stream to that channel. And there's another video on setting up Twitch. Look for that in the description as well. And that is it. Super basic settings in OBS to try to get you streaming right away. Now, you can research other things about increasing your bit rate and bringing more quality through your OBS settings, uh, higher performance, Look around on YouTube for those things. Um, also, don't forget to check out the rest of the videos in my how-to playlist because there's all sorts of goodies in there about streaming, uh, setting up Twitch, and uh, your lighting, and all kinds of stuff. Uh, don't forget to like this video if you actually found it very helpful, uh, and subscribe to my channel so that you'll get alerts when I post new videos. Thanks for watching.